Hello everyone, this is Lolly. I am back with our next installment in our December Daily. What I did since the last video, I added a button to the end of this black ribbon by using Power Tack. And then I just put two, this is what we left with, I just took two journaling cards and I used a circle punch to cut a circle out. And it's a strip that goes on the edge of the paper right there. And it really looks nice and it gives us a nice pull tab. I love it so much that I think I'm going to be doing more of these circle tabs. And now you also see it a little bit from the front. So we did this page, but let's pull this out. Now I might wanna pull these tags out just to give me more of a flat surface. And I also have this that I was going to put on the other side with foam tape. So what I want to do is some hinges. So I grabbed two journaling cards, this one and this one. And I have cut strips of just solid cardstock, this one inch wide, and then scored at the half inch mark. And I made it as long as the card. Now it might be a little longer. I'll trim it off if it is. And I'm actually going to round those corners off a little bit so it's not as noticeable. And I'm lining it up with my fingers so that you're not seeing that fold from the top. And I want this to go over far to the right without getting over the rings. I just want a little bit of a gap there between the rings and this. And this one, by the time I trimmed off the black border, I think I had like five and three quarters maybe. This is also an inch wide and it is also scored at the half inch mark. Now this is going to come on the left side here, right there at the base, it's gonna cover up the little birdie a little bit. So while I'm working, you might hear, you know, some stomping around upstairs now and then. It hasn't started yet. We are having workmen come in any minute now. Yesterday, they uh, removed all the doors from upstairs, and they removed all the remaining flooring and the baseboards and, oh, what are those strips around the edge of the floor where... Um, I'm putting this under this, so if you can see that like that, so I'm not putting it on top of it. They also removed, in other words, lift that up. They removed um, those little strips on the edge of the carpet with nails that hold the carpet. What's that called? They removed those. They removed all the furniture except for two pieces that they cannot move, and they'll just move those aside in the rooms as they're working to put flooring in. So today they need to come in, oh, and then they remove part of the carpet off the stairs. So now we have this and that, and those are our two flips. I'm also gonna take this, and we're going to use this on our next page. But what I want to do is trim off this very bottom strip right there, because it's going to have to get cut off anyway for the next page. And I figured I would put it on this one. And we're just gonna put that right there. I think I like the darker one. So those of you who are new to my channel, our upstairs got a bad flood when one of our pipes just broke and sprayed water all over. Okay, so we've got that. We still need a number. I have cut out the number four. I used a circle punch and I used the download that I have for you. And I'm gonna make sure it's going in between the rings here. And we're only gonna do half of it. Now, if you want, you can take another circle. I'll show you what I mean. Give it um, some decorative look back here. And you can put that back here. Now you'll know we have journaling spot here, we've got journaling spot here, and we have all this room here for photos. We have in our ephemera, we have some golden snowflakes. So let's put one of those on there. This is going to go down, this is going to go across, and that's all we need to do for this day. 
But remember on this one, I had this that I wanted to put on foam tape, and the only reason I didn't was because I didn't want to interfere with gluing things on this side, so that was a good choice. <laughs> And that gives it a little dimension. Now, I did put this aside, and I had thought about even putting that up on foam, but it would make it a little difficult to write on this side. So one thing you can do is just put a little bit of decoration or embellishment in here on the inside. We've got this, and let's put this back into our journal. Now, for this next page, I have gotten a file folder out. Now, everyone's file folders are going to be just a little different, so I can't give you 100% exact measurements on this. So here's what I did. Take it to your paper trimmer and ignore the tab. I mean, get the, get the piece with the tab, but take it to your paper trimmer and cut it so that it's four and three quarters from here to here. Now, so don't measure the tab, but put it in your paper trimmer. Put this up against four and three quarters and cut it that way. That way, this will be sticking out beyond our pages. Then I put it in my Caterpillar crease scoring board, and I scored it eight inches in and folded it back like that. So this is going to be our page. We're going to decorate the front first and then this. Now remember, we just trimmed off the very bottom strip of this, and there, there's a reason for that, and that is that it's not going to fit here otherwise. So let's also trim off this strip on the top that we don't need. And now, in order to get this to fit here, I want a little bit of a border around that. So what I decided is I need this to be five inches wide by seven and three quarter inches tall. Let's do the five inches wide. I'm gonna have to flip it over to get five in here. And now we have this almost perfect strip here. And then I need it to be seven and three quarter inches tall. So See, this is what we have now, but we need to mat this on here so that we see the tab. I'm putting it all the way to the top and all the way to the side here, flipping it over, and I am outlining that piece right there. And I'm going to trim that off. I know you can't see that pencil very well. I'll save that for something. Okay, now that I have that, I need to put it back up there again. And now I need a little border on this side, so I'm putting it over here. Our foundation, that is perfect. Just here and there right there and right here. Okay, so I love that these little strips here are showing on that tab, it's so pretty. One thing that I thought I might want to do is to actually cut this to where it would be a pocket right here, but I'm going to have rings there and I have this template to show me where my rings are going to go, and how far in they're going to go. So I probably am going to start like right around the bird's head and come over this way. So let me get my ruler, and this is the safety ruler that's in my shop. It has my logo on it, but it has this nice uh, raised end, and that way when you lay it on here and put your fingers up against here, you're not going to cut yourself. So I think I'm going to do this um, right above this Joy to the World strip, but I'm only going to do it right about to the bird's head. So right from here all the way right there. So I have a slit there. But another thing I want to do on the back is to reinforce this. And all I have to do is put tape on both sides right at the end of the opening. Like that. And now when I glue this on, I can glue the entire top and this, but then just the sides and the bottom.
And if you wish, you could distress the edges of this. I'm not going to on mine. I want my glue to come out a little faster on the top here, so I'm, I put my glue in the glue tube. So above that, um, above that cut, we can do this, and then just do the very, very edge. It doesn't glue as well over the tape, but it is what it is. There we go. And now we have this pocket right there. So what I want to do there is get a little card in there with the number on it for our day. Let me see how much room I have here. I probably need about two and a half inch wide piece of cardstock to go in here for our tab. And the other thing I did for this was I went ahead and measured this. I cut a three and uh, a three quarter inch tall strip of cardstock by four inches. And then I just took the stamps. Those of you who were able to get the kit early were able to get this at a greatly reduced price. And I um, use the word celebrating, but you can stamp any word on it or use a sticker from your collection. And I, if you notice, when I stamped it, I stamped it off center on purpose because I knew that the hole punch was going to interfere right there somewhere. And I think that really helps because it's so busy with all the patterns going on here that that one strip of solid cardstock really helps it to pop. Now another thing that would be really helpful is to take this 1 8 inch ribbon here and use that to just accentuate a couple of these lines here and really, really make that pop. And I know I'm off camera, I mean, on camera, it's really hard for you to see, but that really made that perk up. And now I'm going to do this strip from here to the end. Oh, that makes me really happy. You know what I didn't think though is, is that hole gonna interfere with this ribbon down here? And wouldn't you know it is. So what I'm going to do is wait for this to dry really well, and then I'm going to use the crocodile to punch that hole because I know it will do a really good job. But uh, it would be better to put your holes in here first and then do your ribbon with the area you have left. So in addition to that, I still have to make the tag that's going to go on the inside. I said two and a half inches wide, and I'm thinking about five and a half inches tall. So I did two and a half inches by five, and then I cut a piece of the cardstock two and a quarter by five and a quarter, glued that on. I'm gonna take the large hole in the crocodile, just eyeball it, punch right there. And I have one of the wide eyelets uh, that are in my shop. Love those wide ones. If you have issues using eyelets, make sure you look down below at the links I'm giving you because I have a video on how to set perfect eyelets. There we go. And we need something as a pole for this. Well, I have a piece of organza cut for this and now I can't find it. So I will look a little longer. In the meantime, I did cut using whole reinforcement set one from Elizabeth Craft Design. I, I have cut these, which are the whole reinforcers. Now I can go this way or this way. I think I'm going to do this. And I did just use my regular punch from Hobby Lobby, their brand, uh, Paper Studios, and it cut the hole pretty well, so I didn't need to worry about going through the ribbon. Now, when you're doing hole reinforcements, you can do every other one. You could do top and bottom, top and bottom, whichever ones you want. I think I'm going to go ahead and do all of these, and you can see that I put mine on tape before I punch them out. You can use Nuvo drops or stickles to go to draw. If you have a really good steady hand, which I don't, you can draw a little line around these holes in order to reinforce them if you feel like you need reinforcement or just for a little extra decoration. I just like the extra pop of color. I think it is really cool. And I like that those are facing in. Very pretty. Okay. And since I didn't find that, I'm going to start over with a new piece. 
and I will use the other organza piece for something else. So what I did, I like organza ribbon for um, for my tags, and so I waited till like Hobby Lobby had all their uh, trims and ribbons on sale, and that's when I went. I just picked out several colors of organza. I did that quite a while ago. Now, if it, with organza, it tends to come undone through time, so one thing you could do is just put one dot of your Fabri-Tac right under the little loop there. So I don't know if you can hear all the scraping and pounding. Um, they're prepping the floor, as I said, so there is a lot of scraping. I'm going to put that right there for now. And now, now that I have opened that pocket once, it, um, it's a lot easier to open now. And I think that is probably good enough. I can take that off. Um, Fabri-Tac adheres tacky pretty quickly, as you can see. And then full adherence is about 24 hours. So that is our page there. Now, I do like sometimes adding something here. This does say warm wishes across here. If you have any gems or whatever, or you could even put these on there just to add a little bit of spruce it up a little bit very cute you could use glossy accents nouveau drops all those would make cute uh, additions to that you could also color in the word celebrating but i think i like this plain because it's so busy and now you can see what it looks like next to this page here but i'm not going to put it in because we need to turn this over I want two mats here and here. I already prepped and just kind of measured to see what size I need. So I'm not gonna bring this paper all the way down because it would be a waste. This pocket is going to get glued on because once it's in the rings, I can't very well open it. I could use it as a tuck instead of a full pocket. If that's the case, then I would make this seven and three quarters by three and three quarters. So if you want to do this just as a tuck and only glue, just end here and leave this open, that's a possibility. Now nah, let, let's do that. Let's change this and say, we're gonna make this five by seven and three quarters. Seven and three quarters is this way. And then this one is four and a half wide, three and three eighths, and three and three eighths, it's between three and a quarter and three and a half on your trimmer. So let's pick out the papers that we want for that. And I, I want something very uh, calming here because I like this big sticker right here and it is just going to fit there. I'm going to mat this with a solid color and then uh, I will use that sticker there. And a lot of the papers are so busy. I like this. I especially like it for accents and I like both sides so it is a hard one. Ooh, I love both of these. This can be that and then I'll do something solid for here. So we said that this one has to be seven and three quarters by five. So that gives us this, but of course we're going to have to cut that off again. It's a lot of work to mat one of these um, file folders, but I think it's so worth it to keep the tab. If you don't like this work of getting that cut around there, just make a, a piece that's, oh, four and a half wide by seven and three quarters, and it, it won't have the tab covered, and that is just fine. You can see I'm gonna have to punch my holes again, and that will be there. Before I glue that down, I'm going to make sure that I am really happy with it and I'm married to it. And I'm looking at this, and I'm wondering if I can't use the green underneath. And if you're not sure, all you have to do is just kind of look over there. And I think most of the time I am liking the red. Hmm, I really like the red because of the focus on the poinsettias here. So let's do that. That is four and a half by three and three eighths. And it is. So now all we need to do is get this corner done and decide if you want. I, I have linen side and smooth side. I think with the sticker, I'm going to do the smooth side. Okay, another thing we could do is to leave this open right here or right here. I don't know. I am going to do this as, let me go ahead and glue this. You could leave it open at the top and 
put a tag down there. It's totally up to you. There's so many ways to add tags to this project. Let's do that. Let's just put a thumb notch right in here. And let's just bring the glue on the tab and then on the side, whoops, and then this bottom part. Because a tag would be too long if I made this all one huge pocket. I think just having half a pocket is going to be just fine. Okay, and remember, this is just going to be a, a, a tuck spot kind of here, so I'm only going to glue it right here and right between the holes. I'm going to repunch all my holes off camera. Okay. Oh, that's so fun. It would have been great if I had waited to put the um, hole reinforcers on after I repunched my holes. So there is that. There's that tuck spot. I want to go ahead and get this on there. Now there are two holes here that you could use and put ribbons on, but I'm looking and I don't think that I'm going to punch those out. You notice this paper here matches that perfectly, so I'm glad I chose that paper. And now we went down to about here, so the biggest tag I could get would be about three and a half, three and three quarters. It depends on how much you want it sticking out the top. Um, and then by here, about three and a half. So we can work on that tag a little later. So we can always use some of the leftovers, bring in something like this. This is the back of that, or I could use this for the tags, which I really like, you know, the, um, this here, the pull tabs. I said, I really like that look and I'm going to keep doing that. I think that is so fun, but I'm still thinking I could put something there, a little extra there. I think what I will do as well is I will pour out some of my mini buttons and see if I can choose. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to glue uh, these two buttons on there while I'm working on making my... It helps to put these on paper because otherwise they stick to the silicone mat here when I try to use my jewel picker. So let's get those on there. Power attack, don't use a hot glue gun because that will, it's not permanent. You can see how incredible this jewel picker is to be able to pick buttons up like that. And now we've got this, all I need is the two tags. Now this one, I like how light colored it is, it is a vertical card, it's light, it could be a journaling spot. And let's see, what day did we finish up with? We finished up with four. This is five. I need to put a number on that. And then this will be six. This is a download that I'm giving you. And so this can go right there. And we need something on the back. And even this, though it has my website there, you could still punch holes and use the other side. making sure that's dry before I put that in there. You could put a staple through that if you want. So that gives us day six. These are set enough that I can flip it over and remember that I'm supposed to do day five here. So what I think I'll do, could go right in the middle of that flower there as well. I kind of like that. So now we have five, we have six, and this has got the little tuck there. One more tag, and that is the one that we said would be three and a half by three and three quarters, maybe. And I do think we need to go with a solid color or something like this. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Okay, so I'm going to get those corners rounded on this. Let's see, I'm gonna use the half inch. This is the corner chomper. Yes, people say it's a very expensive tool, but it cuts through chipboard, and I think that is really critical. And this is the way, I should have uh, looked to see which way it was oriented, but I like to add that green right there. I think that's really helpful to my project. And let's get another one of those circles that I punched through a border so it's like half and half. All right, and now 
I'm going to use uh, the same pattern or a different color. I cut this one out. It's perfect. This will be for the back just to cover up the fact that there's writing on there. So I'm giving you underneath this video a huge list of links. So the project downloads. There we go. So now we've got that and that. I just had a thought. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yes. Love this thought. I'm going to put a hole right in the middle of this. A big one. There we go. Perfect. Oh, I love it already. And we're going to use another eyelet. Now, you don't have to put any kind of strings through your eyelet. Just because it's there doesn't mean you have to. Totally up to you. So I love the look. I love that. I love this sticking out there. It is perfect that I use that one inch uh, hole punch to get that little notch in there. It makes it perfect. This is a little uh, understated right here because we now we have a place for a photo. Okay, and also photos and journaling cards can go in here. Let's just put this little strip across there just to break up the monotony and we can still work within our boundaries of leaving it open for having a um, photo right there. We could still do that. Now I am just uh, doing the bottom of this strip instead of the whole, the whole strip. And I want to get that between the holes and wherever your holes are on your paper, you'll have to go around those. So as my holes might be in a different place, there we go. That really helped perk it up. So let's look at the progress we made today. We did quite a bit. We went back and we put this up on foam tape for day three. Day four, we had these two flips. Day five, we've got this pocket here and we can still put photos in there. Love the file folder look. And then this day, six, we've got this tuck spot here. We could put way more in there than what we have. And we have this that can be journaled on. You could put a journaling card on there. You could put a photo on there. It fits in there beautifully. Now, when we close it, we see that we've got this tab from our file folder. We have this tab from a pull from a journaling card. We've got this tab from a journaling card and we've got our ribbon sticking out. So we're getting some interest here. It's looking really fun, and I am so happy, especially with this uh, file folder piece. Love that. I'm giving you underneath this video the links to all of the supplies you're going to need.